going on people it's e21 so today basically uh, it's really going to be plain and simple straightforward how I go about sampling how I go about chopping and how I go about storing my samples after I get them so we're going to hit the sample button uh, the MV gives you a few different ways to sample it gives you a manual excuse me gives you a manual it gives you a level that's the way I do it a pad uh, I guess if you have something on the pad, you want to sample that pad, boom, you can knock that out and play. Hit the play button, it'll sample whatever you got playing or built into the uh, your sequence window. So me, how I do it is I start off with my level. I bring the level all the way down to 36. It's already done. So basically, as soon as, uh, soon as the sound comes in, it automatically captures the sound, the transient, the attack. It gives me everything, even without hearing anything come in so it, it has to have a look ahead a few milliseconds of a look ahead and i'm not going to make a beat out of this so i'm just going to show you what i do and i'm going to go over the bass note too so let's count let's see where we at And the dope thing is I like to use my preview buttons, the to and the from. So I'm using my preview from to, so I can hear what I'm cutting off. So I'm basically I'm cutting off all this right here. Two is giving me a preview from wherever uh, the length of my preview is. We can set a preview length. I forget from I think 0.5 seconds to two seconds. I forget exactly so that's my preview too because it's going to go from the sample from wherever the preview length begins to the end and then my from is from the end to what I'm cutting off so basically I'm cutting off that little strip right there if you can see it Let's zoom in a little more so you can see so my from is cutting off all this. So I'm going to truncate that. And then now the bass note. Make sure you're starting and you got your starting endpoints right. You know, um, my endpoint, my start point. Now your bass note is how many beats is in that sample that you took. So one, two, three, four, five, six. 7, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 1. That would be the 17th beat where it stopped at. So it has 16 beats, uh, bass notes in this sample. So now, once I have that correct, the count of my bass note, it'll give me my tempo. So that sample is 74.25. I'm going to quick assign it. Now with the quick assign, you have chop, audit, assign to an audio phrase, or assign to a patch. I'm going to chop it. For the sake of the video, I'm going to do auto chop. What I like to say is, especially for the newcomers, do not auto chop right away. Tune your ears to chopping, uh, tune your ears to making mistakes. Because when you make a mistake when you chop, it can also work to your benefit because you might cut something where you're thinking you're cutting it on point, but you might just make a mistake and cut it a little bit too much um, before the transient or after the transient or wherever you want to put it. And you just didn't make the cut correctly, but you went back and played your beat and you started playing your chops and noticed something was kind of off because you chopped it manually and auto chop will not give you the mistake that you might be looking for. So if you've been chopping up samples and chopping up records for 10 years plus, by all means, auto chop. But if you're just beginning, you don't even have a year in, you don't have two years in, I would say for at least your first, at least the first five years, manually chop. You can find out little tips that you're gonna come across that you didn't even know you know, uh, were out there because nobody told you, but you came across something on your own and it works to your benefit. 
because you did not auto chop. But I'm going to auto chop and I'm going to divide it again with the MV. It gives you a few different ways to auto chop. You can chop it by level, you can chop it by beat, or you can divide it up evenly. Sometimes I go by beat, but I'm going to do it evenly, so I'm going to dial in 16 chops. And the MV chops very fast. The chops are done. You know, and then you go in, because they're not all 100% on point. You go in, you make all your chops, you know, you get them on point. You know, you get them right to that transient where you want it, or wherever you want it, however you want to do it. You know, and then I assign it to a patch. I also store my samples to an audio phrase. So with on your parts or basically on your track, you get six banks. If you filling up your bank, especially with my, I got a lot of percussion sound. So if I go through and I start filling up, I get to bank six. I go in my hard drive, let's say, and I start looking for more percussion sounds. So now we're in. Now the reason I store all my sounds to an audio phrase is because, let me go back again. Say if I wanted to do quick assign and I wanted to store them to a patch. I took eight sounds. I only have six spaces left. Say all this was used up. But the only I only need two of these sounds to go on this beat. So what I would do is, is that's the sound I like. Okay, I'll clipboard it and I'll bring it to my percussion track. And then I'll store it wherever I have the empty space. So that's why I use the audio banks as storage. Because you have 16, uh, 16 pads times 32 banks. That's a lot of storage. And you can name your banks, whatever you want to name them. Stay tuned for the next video. I'm going to be going over uh, the bass note. That's really plain and simple. It's probably going to be maybe a five-minute video, if that. Um, I'm going to go over the bass note and how you can lay it out with the loops and how they lock in time. So stay tuned. E21, MV8800. Peace.